All right, so the main session under this review will be on some laws of probability. And we would like to start with some axioms, okay? By definition, an axiom is a proposition. To that proposition is just a statement that a friend or denies something and is either true or false, okay? So an axiom is a proposition that is not susceptible or convincible of proof or disproof. This basically means that its truth is assumed to be self-evident, okay? So to begin with, uh, let omega be the sample space for random experiment. Also, let capital P denote a probability measure which assigns event E, which is containing the sample space to random numbers in interval of zero and one and satisfy the following properties. So the first algorithm is that for any event E, the probability of that event will be non-negative. And also the probability of the sample space will be equal to one. So based on these um, two conditions, it basically means that the probability of any event will always lie within, within an interval of zero and one, okay? All right, so the third axiom states that if A and B are mutually exclusive event, then the probability of their union will be equal to the sum of their marginal probabilities, okay? That is probability of A union B is equal to probability of A plus probability of B. All right, now let's take a look at these notations. Probability of A union B is similar to probability of A or B. And also probability of A intersection B is similar to probability of A and B, okay? So once you say this, you don't need to be confused, okay? All right, now let's take a look at some elementary theorems, okay? A theorem is, is a proposition that is deducible from basic postulate assumptions, okay? And behind every theorem, there's a proof, okay? So we'll look at how to prove some of these basic elementary, elementary theorems, okay? All right, so let's look at the first theorem, which states that the probability of the null set or the empty set is equal to zero. So how do you prove this theorem? All right, so um, let if omega and that like our sample space and the null set are mutually exclusive, then we have this, right? You can say that the union of the um, sample space and that of the null set will be equal to that of the sample space, okay? And this is true, you can basically show this using a Venn diagram, okay? So once we take probability on the left-hand side and the right-hand side, this is what we're going to obtain. And we know by the third axiom that once the events are mutually exclusive and express it as the sum of the imaginary probability, so that's what we have here, okay? And once we make this the subject, we have to take this to the other side. So that's what we have here. And we know the probability of the sample space is one. So one minus one will be equal to one, zero. So therefore the probability of the empty set or the null set is equal to zero, okay? So this is basically how to prove this theorem, okay? All right, let's take a look at the second theorem. The second theorem states that the probability of the complement of an event is equal to one minus probability of that event, okay? So how do we prove this theorem? So um, first, if A and its complement are mutually exclusive, of course, they are going to be mutually exclusive. Then we have this, we can express this in this form. So A union its complement is equal to that of the um, universal set or the sample space, okay? So let me quickly show you this. All right, so here we have, so we have the event A in this and shaded portion and the shaded portion stands for the complement of A. And we already know what complement means from our previous tutorial, okay? So we can see that this event A and the, and the shaded portion here will be equal to that of the sample space S or the omega, okay? All right, so that's basically what we have here. So once we take probability on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side is what we're going to obtain, and since they are mutually exclusive by the third axiom, we can express it as a sum of the imaginal probabilities. So this will be probability of A plus probability of A complement, right? And we want to make the complement a subject. So this is what we're going to obtain. We take this one to the other side, so it will be minus. Then we know that the probability of the sample space is one by the um, second axiom. So Therefore, probability of A complement is equal to one minus probability of what? A, okay? So this basically how to prove um, the second term as well. All right. Now let's take a look at a third theorem. So the third theorem states that probability of A union B is equal to the probability of A plus probability of 
B minus probability of A intersection B, okay? And note that the theorem three is what we call the addition rule of probability, okay? So yeah, there's no restriction that the events are mutually exclusive, okay? So how do we prove this theorem? So um, A and U, A union B can be decomposed into mutually exclusive events, okay? So we can express A union B in this form, A intersection B complement union B, okay? Let me give a Venn diagram to show you this. So let's assume we have our um, universal set with the margin center space and we have two events A and B. We want to find a union, but this time in a different way. So we have A intersection B complement, which is the same as A and M. A minus B, okay, this is the same as the set difference. A minus B, we have already looked at this from our previous theorem and what set difference means. So this is A only, which is the same as um, A minus B, okay, or A intersection B complement. So this set portion together with the whole of B, right, will can be expressed as A union B, okay. So that's basically what we have here. So once we take probability on the left hand side as well as the right hand side, we obtain this. Then the next thing is to basically, because these are, are mutually exclusive, right? This and this are mutually exclusive, can express this in this form, right? By the third idea. Then um, basically, we can make B probability of A to be complementary subject, okay? So once you hold this constant, you take this to the other side, the minus. So that's basically what we have here. So let's indicate this as 1.1. All right, so the next thing that we want to look at is um, we can also decompose A into mutually exclusive event, okay? So A itself can be decomposed into this form. So we can have, can express the event A as A intersection B complement union A intersection B, okay? Let me give a Venn diagram to show you this. So we have, this is the whole of A. So we have A intersection B complement and we also have A intersection B. So once you combine this portion, together with this portion, you get the whole of what A, okay? All right, so once we take probability on the left-hand side as well as the right-hand side, we obtain this, okay? All right, so let's name this or indicate this as 2.2, equation 2.2. So um, substitute equation 1.1 into equation 2.2, we obtain this equation, okay? So we know that um, in here, if you go back, if you check equation 1.1, we, we make this the subject probability of intersection B, which was equal to this, okay? So from here, we can make um, probability of A union B the subject, okay? And once you make that the subject, you obtain this, okay? You just have to take this to the other side and also take this to the other side, which is going to be this. Once it crosses the equal side, it's going to be positive. And once this crosses the equal side, it's going to be this, okay? To, the, to this side. So we can also re rearrange it in this form. So this basically proves the third theorem, okay? All right, so um, this will bring us to the end of this session. I hope you join me in the next video on the addition rule of probability with some examples and exercise, okay? Don't forget to subscribe if you have not, and thank you for watching.